Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Moose Henderson. I'm a wildlife photographer and about a week ago I did a video about changing directions where I explained why I have temporarily left Wyoming and the Tetons, Yellowstone area and why I have traveled over towards the east. I am currently located in Tennessee I'm staying with a buddy of mine near Knoxville, Tennessee. And while I'm staying with my buddy, we are building what is called a gypsy wagon or a Vardo. And the reason I'm building this is because I'm heading to Florida and I'll be spending four or five months in Florida writing a book about the wildlife that's located in Florida. And I really don't want to stay in a hotel or a tent or something like that. And so I've decided to build myself a little traveling trailer. A couple of days ago, I did a video on how to select a trailer in order to build a tiny house on or a gypsy wagon, a bardo or something like that. Well, I took that advice and I went on Craigslist and I found myself a trailer and this trailer happened to be used. It was about 150 miles from where we're located but I called the guy up and after a short discussion and a few questions I decided this trailer was just exactly what I needed. And so my friend and I made a trip down to where the trailer was located. I was able to purchase this trailer for $300, which was roughly $700 less than I could have bought the trailer for brand new. It does have a couple of small things that need to be fixed. For instance, it needed lights installed on the back end and a few things like that. But for a $300 price tag, I thought it was no problem to do a couple of small items. I will also need to repack the bearings and install some fenders. But nonetheless, this trailer will serve as a good platform for this traveling trailer, as we'll call it from now on. The first job once we got the trailer home was to go shopping and get our initial supply of wood. And so we went to the big box stores and purchased a load of wood insulation, nails, well no nails, screws and things like that and brought those home and the very next day we started construction on the foundation of this traveling trailer and this video will cover the construction of that foundation that goes inside the trailer that I purchased. Part of the wood that I purchased was two by fours and I decided to cut these down into two by twos in order to use for the walls. Part of the walls will be built out of two by fours and part of it will be built out of two by twos. The reason for using two by twos is it helps to save on weight and when you're building something to tow behind your truck and I have a Chevy Colorado it's important to keep the weight considerations primary in your mind and I'm trying to build this trailer so that the overall weight is 1500 pounds or less. That's 1500 pounds when totally loaded and towing behind my truck. The first thing we did was start off with a sheet of three quarter inch plywood and we attached two sides to this plywood also constructed out of three quarter inch plywood and then we constructed a front and a back and this made a totally enclosed box that will go inside the trailer and this will be supported by the trailer base itself and it will also be partly supported by the side rails of the trailer. The next thing that we did was turn the box upside down and I coated the underside of the box with a product similar to ice and water shield. 
This is a product ice and water shield it is used uh, up north where it gets really cold and it is put under metal roofing and stuff like that in order to waterproof a roof. It's uh, probably a sixteenth of an inch tar-like compound, like a membrane. It's sticky on one side and it's either smooth or has a bit of a textured surface on the other side. I chose one with a textured surface. And here in this photo we can see that this product is installed on the underside of this box. And then I went ahead and installed it also on the sides of this box. Once this was installed, I pressed it down to make sure it fit well all the way around and it had good adhesive qualities. Then my friend and I picked up this box and put it into the frame of the trailer. It took a little bit of wiggling because it was a tight fit, but because we measured accurately, we were able to put this exactly into the space that we had available in this box. The trailer frame that I'm using is roughly four feet wide by eight feet long. And so this box that is inside the trailer is is four feet by eight feet. The next thing that we did was construct some struts to go on the side of this box because I wanted to extend the amount of living space on the inside of this small trailer so that I had a total of six feet from side to side. So the inside dimensions will be approximately six feet by eight feet and that will allow me to put a bed crossways inside the trailer. This is one of the circumstances where it's very nice to be short because a six foot bed is more than enough room for myself. And so we can see in this photograph these side struts that we have cut out of 2 by 12 pine and installed them onto the side of the trailer. And this is going to give us an area where we can build a platform out to the side of the trailer that goes out over the wheels and it extends the bed of the trailer to a wider extent. You can also see on the inside of the trailer that we've used these two by two boards that I cut down and these are mounted on the inside of the three quarter inch plywood and this space that is in between these boards, I will install insulation, inch and a half uh, hard foam type insulation. In this next photograph, you can see the plywood that is laid on top of these quarter struts and this is going to be anchored down and this will become the platform for building the second stage of, of this gypsy wagon or Bardo trailer as some people call them. This last image shows part of the structure that has been installed on these walls. We'll wait to discuss this structure in more detail in part two of this video series. And this particular video series will follow from start to finish the building of this gypsy wagon or bardo or travel trailer as I'm calling it. I'm not giving actual dimensions of the inside and the trailer and things like that because everyone's going to be purchasing a little bit different dimensions of their trailer and you need to build it so that it fits exactly within the footprint of the trailer that you're building. So that's why I'm not giving very many directions. There are quite a few videos on the internet on gypsy wagons, bardo trailers, overland trailers, and things like that. I spent maybe three or four days watching a series of videos to decide exactly what I would like to have and what I needed to be able to support this new lifestyle that I'm embarking on. 
I've previously built two tiny houses, so I have a little bit of experience with constructing things like this. But every time you build one of these, it's kind of a flying by the seat of your pants type of thing. There's no set way to do anything. And many times you'll construct something and take it apart, build it again, and then construct it and take it apart and build it again. Because sometimes it just takes a few iterations to be able to come up with exactly what you want to have and what you have as your vision. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you would, hit the like icon. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. I thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned for part two of this video where we put together the upper box section of this structure. We install some windows, some electrical, and we put on the exterior siding. And then part three, we'll do the roof and the door and some of the other exterior furnishings that go on this trailer. So I thank you so much and I'll see you again next time.